Hello everyone and welcome um, to this session. Um, we're just getting going. We'll give um, a few more seconds just for, for others to join. Um, quite a few people are already in the session. Um, not to eat into the speaker's time, so um, I'll very briefly just introduce Simon, um, who's a research management system administrator at the University of Exeter. Um, Simon will be talking about Wikidata and um, quite an interesting topic for us all um, and look forward to um, hearing from Simon. So Simon, over to you. Okay, good morning everyone, or oh, good afternoon wherever you are. Um, having a great uh, time at Pitapalooza and I hope you all, all are too. We've had some really interesting talks. Um, a few about Wikidata already and a lot of mentions of Wikidata in other talks. So. Um, I know a lot of people are familiar with Wikidata, but this is aimed at people who perhaps aren't so much or are thinking about Wikidata as a, um, as a, a tool that they can use in their works. Um, so what I propose to do is to spend about 10 or 15 minutes um, just talking about Wikidata and introduce you to um, how PIDs are used and managed in Wikidata. And then I'd like to open it up and um, try and have a discussion. Obviously, we're constrained by not being in a room together, but um, that can be questions or if anyone wants to step up and uh, and um, talk about what they're doing with Wikidata or what they're thinking of doing, that would be absolutely fantastic. So um, anyway, I'll just uh, move on to the next slide and um, just introduce Wikidata a bit. Um, Wikidata is a Wikimedia Foundation project, so it's a sister project of Wikipedia. Um, it was originally set up as a way of centralizing the storage of data across all the different languages of Wikipedia and other Wikimedia Foundation projects. So you don't have to make the same updates in multiple different sites. It's all just to store data that everyone can harvest. But in the um, eight years that Wikidata has been uh, going now, it's grown and people have started adding collections and their content from their institutions. Um, a lot of work on scholarly papers and citations is going on. And it's a general knowledge base um, that's been created and maintained collaboratively by a community of editors. I think at any one time, about 12,000 active editors in a month. Um, we've got 91 million items now. Um, which isn't that informative. The problem key statistic is more triples, which is um, a semantic statement, um, subject, predicate, object. So talk about the uh, United Kingdom is a country as um, subject, predicate, object. So everything's structured in that way. Um, and it's all um, free to reuse um, under CC0. Um, Creative Commons release and it just keeps on growing and growing and more and more people are getting interested so there's all this potential there to tap into. Um, I want to focus a bit on PIDs. Um, we've got 8,300 properties and a sizable proportion of those are external identifiers. Um, about 5,700 uh, external identifiers um properties that is and um 163 million identifiers so um there's all this work going on to collect and collate different identifiers um dois we've got about uh, i think 27 million um 1.7 million items have an orchid id attached to them so this is harvesting content from um, various different sources um, bringing it all together and then um, making it available to reuse and query is quite interesting potential for across a number of different subject areas. Um, in terms of the properties we've got, um, see a few statistics about the classes um, relating to scholarly articles, um, 56 properties and uh, 74 million items. Um, 74 million identifiers, sorry. I, I shan't just read statistics out to you because it would be quite boring. I'll talk a little bit about the um, 
the property creation process, um, which every every property goes through, um, a, has to be proposed by someone, um, and then it's reviewed and discussed by the community um, before it can be created and used. Um, so anyone can propose a property. You just have to fill out um, a form, really, and uh, post it in the property proposals, um, explain why you want to have it and what benefit you think um, it offers. And then the community can discuss, ask questions, and vote on it over a minimum of a week, but it can um, last a bit longer if uh, if it's an active and lively discussion. Um, once a property has been created, it's documented um, on the talk page of the property, um, and there's a lot of um, links with the, created for information about the, how the property is used. So. Um, reports and uh, constraint violations um, are all readily accessible from the property page, which can be quite informative. Um, and um, you can continue discussing after it's been created also on the, on the property page. And I will um, show you some examples afterwards. It's um, not that convenient to switch between presenting from slides into sharing tabs in the browser. So I'll, it's a bit um, fragmented, I'm afraid, the way it's working out, but um, I, we, we'll come back to that after the presentation. Um, so in addition to discussing a new property when it's created, there are wiki projects um, that are focused around uh, areas of interest um, for a group of editors who can then work as a team to tackle a, a common problem. Um, and um, each project has a um, a page that um, contains a data model for the items that, that they're interested in usually, lists of properties that can be used, um, tools, and um, most importantly, it has a list of the people who are, are interested in that project so you can all communicate and discuss um, ongoing activities and how, how to move forward with um, the tasks that, that relate to the project. So all different fields uh, are covered by projects um, and if you are interested then I would recommend signing up for one it's a really good starting place to become active and engaged with the community um, so tools are really important obviously when you've got 92 million items it's um, not something that you can just browse very easily and be able to use a tool that can help you with querying or reconciliation to identify items that you, you're interested in editing and um, perhaps reusing outside of Wikidata or you want to enhance them with your own data. Um, it's really important to have this um, suite of tools that we can draw on that have been uh, created by the community. And there are some absolutely fantastic tools um, available. Uh, the one I've got on the screen is um, Mix and Match. It's um, has various catalogs that you can use and it so, um, for reconciling from an external catalog to Wikidata and then adding the identifiers to, to individual items. Um, it's also, also mapping between different identifiers. Is, that's really good for, um, use of Sparkle queries, but there's also a tool called Beacon that can um, map from one identifier to the other based on Wikidata. And that's really all I wanted to say as an introduction. Um, like to again offer anyone the opportunity to ask questions, or um, I should have posted a link to the Etherpad in the chat, and I will do that now. Excuse me. So if you want to put any questions in the Etherpad, you can do that, but. Um, in the meantime, I, I can uh, show you some examples of tools and um, see if I can change which window I'm sharing. I think you might have to unshare and then um, share again. Um, okay. Simon, if that yeah, works. that's absolutely fine. So.
And in the meantime, while Simon's getting that up, feel free to just click on the link and add in there. Are you um, ready, yeah. Simon? Perfect. Yeah, yeah. So um, I was talking about beacon for mapping between identifiers. This is an example of um, using the raw property, so 6782, and the cross ref funder ID property 3153. Um, we get a mapping between. Um, Cross for funder IDs and raw IDs via the Wikidata items. So um, you can use this for any combination of different um, identifiers and um, start mapping between them based on what's been added to Wikidata, which I think is really handy to be able to export a list like that. It is just running off a Sparkle query, so you might prefer just to write it, write a query yourself, but it lowers the barrier to um, to being able to do that. I'll show you mix and match as well, which I, I mentioned. So this is the catalog for ISNI, and you can see when people have been matching, who's been working on it at the bottom there. Um, it will give you suggestions of um, of potential matches that um, have been generated automatically from the metadata in the catalog. And then you can look at one, see if it looks right. and click through and verify it. And you can just click confirm. I shan't do it at the moment because I'm not, not really focused on it. I don't want to make any mistakes. But it's a really um, easy way to start adding extra identifiers rather than having to try and do reconciliation from scratch. Um, and there are absolutely loads of catalogs. Let's have a look. So all sorts of things. Go into journals, for example. So we've got data that's been scraped from various websites. Um, you can see the progress of uh, the ingest. Um, so yeah, that's just an example of the sort of tools that have been built and um, that can really help you um, get your data into Wikidata. Simon, can you just um, zoom in slightly in the browser? It might be a bit bigger for everyone, I think. Um, okay, yeah, so absolutely. I think that's better, yeah. Thank you. Okay, I just see. Uh... Okay, yeah, um, it is possible. I've actually got an example of um, how you can get the identifiers based on one identifier open as a query already. Um, I will put the link to this one in. So it's using raw ID. This is the United Nations, and I probably need to zoom in again on this tab, don't I? I'll, let me put the link into the etherpad while I talk about it. So. There we go. And, okay, so yeah, it's using the raw ID to find the Wikidata item, and then it's um, getting all the external identifier properties that are on that item. So we've got a hundred and something different identifiers here. I think this is a really powerful use of Wikidata to be able to get so many different identifiers in one query. Um, yeah, so if you just change the property, um, and it's really easy to do that, you can press control space and then start typing and search for a property. So if you want to Disney, obviously it won't work because that's a raw ID, but perhaps we have an Disney that we can use here. Should be the same results over the thought. Yeah, there we go. So you can take your pick of different identifiers. Um, if you need help to find properties, then I would recommend using 
prop browse tool. Um, so you can just search for all of them just using text. So DOI, for example, and then you can click through and go into the property page. And let me put the link to prop browse in the etherpad as well. Okay, so my slides aren't online at the moment. I will put them online afterwards. I'll probably put them on Wiki Commons and um, I will share a link in this etherpad when I've put them online. I'll do it straight after I finish speaking. Sorry for not doing that in advance. Uh, There's also a question in the uh, chat, Simon. I don't oh, know if okay. you want to take those now or would you prefer to wait? No, no, I, I will okay. take now. And there's a question about um, using Wikidata, I guess, to aggregate researcher outputs. Um, so it said, could you use this for research outputs? Um, so, yeah, I have another example open, which is, um, this is using a raw ID, and this is the Smithsonian, um, to look up research at the Institute. So, um, it's looking for researchers affiliated with the institution with this uh, raw ID and then getting research papers for um, anyone at the institution. So this is recent papers. Um, for things like that, I would recommend using Scolia. Uh, which if you saw Daniel Meachin's uh, talk earlier, he was uh, demonstrating it. He, He's uh, much more qualified to speak about it than I am having, as he's um, one of the creators of it. It's um, really a fantastic tool. So, um, so is the scope of the question aggregating in the context of an institution or is it more subject-based? Um, Nina, I don't know if you um, want to either come on screen or maybe just type in the chat. Um... I assume that it's aggregation and um, maybe I can share as an example, we do this in the PID graph um, at data site and um, we pull um, information from Wikidata. So um, you'll see the Wikidata identifier for University of Cape Town in that and that aggregates um, various outputs. Um, so it all comes together in the PID graph. Um, so I don't know if there's, Nina, you can type in there if Simon um, has more clarity, maybe it can help. Um... Yeah, so you should be able to just search for an institution. Um, the aggregating, for broad aggregating, you probably need to use the database dump, I would have thought, because the query service will time out if you try and do it by Sparkle. But um, the whole database is, available as um, RDF dump, so, you can, sorry, no, it's JSON. Um, and uh, yeah, you can take that and then reuse it. And I, that will probably be the best approach if you're working at a, a large scale. But if, um, if there's a more specific example I could perhaps uh, show you, then um, just put it in the chat, actually is. researchers that are not typical um yeah i guess so i mean i i'll be honest i don't know exactly what that means but i don't think that really matters you can just create a wikidata item for a researcher so let me just click through and get to the wikidata item all you would need to do is set up a a new item instance of human and then start entering their details and then add them as a author of, uh, of their papers so it'll be linked here I probably need to zoom in a little bit again so once they're added as an author to this is a academic article um yeah once once they're linked and that connection's made then it's queryable and uh 
So African medieval history. Yeah, I guess our coverage in that area might not be so strong because there's been more of a STEM focus on the the ingest of papers. So someone is not showing it well. Okay, yeah. Yeah, they are really good use cases, but because of the way that the items we have been curated, it's been based on harvest using PubMed IDs and DOIs primarily. So if their work isn't covered by those identifiers, then they're not so likely to have been brought in. But if you have data, then it'd be great to increase the coverage of um, other, other subject areas, um, particularly people who are publishing books. We haven't got such good coverage of books, really. I think there's only 60,000 or so in comparison with um, over 30 million um, scholarly works. As Toby said, if you're willing to load the data, it, it can, will be better represented. Um, and if you need any help, send me a message on Wikidata and I can we can talk about how you can do the data import if you're not feeling like that's something you can do yourself. Um, just need data to work with that's, um, that's accessible and reusable. And yeah, it'd be great to work on something like that and um, get strong coverage in a specialized area. And then we can start using Scolia to look at about Scolia. Simon, so, I had a question, you know, talking, it seems like there's a few people um, participating that are interested in sort of collaborating and sort of uh, working through some of these use cases. Have you done much of that? And how do participants um, get in touch? And um, are you open so to sort of working with others? Um, yeah, I'm really interested in how we can collaborate with other people, particularly communities um, working with PIDs outside of the Wikidata community. Um, because I think there's benefits for both sides if we can collaborate. If, because it's a community of human editors, it's really good for identifying errors in sources where if you're relying largely on um, machine generated content, then obviously it's not going to be perfect so it can be refined by the community um, and we could notify them if they can make their data available for us to reuse and augment our items so i think there's a lot of benefits and um, i'm particularly interested in author items i've been working on the items that have been created from papers using orchids that are very sparse and just trying to flesh them out um, even reusing ORCID, I found a lot of challenges in um, in the variation in data that's been created by people managing their profiles. Obviously, multiple different people, millions of different people that they're not going to be consistent in how they're doing everything. And um, also, the IDs used for organizations are ring gold, which aren't open and accessible so that poses a challenge for reconciliation when that's the identifier you've got to work with so there's loads and loads of these areas that we can tackle better together than any one community focusing on it in isolation it's we'll just end up reinventing the wheel so if people want to discuss ideas or need help with anything then get in touch with me or I, I can uh, let me post the link to the um, source MD wiki project, which is focused on um, metadata for citations. And I think, as you say, um, Simon, it's um, 
leveraging that open infrastructure is really useful and if it's open um, that helps for the reconciliation um, i see nina also commented um lots of the orchids um, records aren't populated and so that's you know a prime use case if there's other open data so you can use other apis and other sources to look for um, the orchid ids um, whether it's in orchid or not and you can use that to um, reconcile um, so yeah, it tends to be um, a problem the way data is harvested and reused. If there are areas that have got poor coverage, it just gets replicated. And we need to focus on tackling that. And Wikidata is a low barrier way to do that. I don't know if it's the right way long term, because obviously it, it's it got disadvantages compared to Orchid, where someone has their own item which they can manage. Um, Having a Wikidata item probably isn't the same. I don't think it would ever get used um, by journals, for example, on, in their citations. I, I think it would be a, a long way from that point if it ever ha happens. Um, and it's probably best to focus on improving ORCID coverage of the, in those areas and getting people to create a ORCID ID for themselves and rather than just trying to do it elsewhere. Because um, I think we create silos, to be honest. So Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I, there's two minutes left. If there's anyone has got any more questions, but um, I'm happy to leave it at that. It's been um, really interesting and shame we can't be in the room and have a proper conversation. But thank you for your contributions to, to the session. and. Um, do please drop me a, a message if you, if you if you want to continue the conversation after. I see there's some more comments in the Eftipad, so I'll respond to those after the session. Great, thanks. I mean, you can just respond in the chat. And I just wanted to thank you um, for sharing with us. And um, if we can do a virtual round of applause. And um, thanks, Simon, in the chat. Um, and with that, if you just give me a moment, I will um, uh, close out um, and